Hey, Lexi. What you doing? Hmm? What's up? You see something? No? Yeah? No? Hmm? Yeah? Yeah? Up here? Maybe up here? Look at my hand. Look at my hand! Look! Isn't that interesting? I'm not gonna lie, I, I don't have a joke for this video to make. So, at the time of this recording, it's been about a week since the one-year anniversary of Engelreis and Shrouded Piety. The thick of my work is over for a time, but that doesn't mean I have an open schedule. I'm always busy on something. Right now, I'm working towards a new YouTube intro that's quicker and of greater quality. There's also a struggle of finding more original content to put on my channel. Even though it's a channel devoted to all things scientix, I don't want every single video to relate to my stories. I definitely expect something more universal soon, perhaps some video editorials. In the meantime, we've got another brief history of, but this one's not quite as filled as you may hope. Diagon's a good character, but as Engelreis.com shows, he really is, debatably, just a minor character in Engelreis. That being said, I don't have too much amazing stuff to say about Diagon, but probably enough to cover a minute or two. Really, this one's going to be trivia, if anything. Diagon is a character I thought of in the spur of a moment, but early enough into the story. As Tamako ventured forward into her adventure early on, it became increasingly apparent to me that I needed to give her a temporary companion for the sake of keeping a consistent dialogue going. Plus, I took into consideration the fact that it would be the best I take advantage of Imperia while I could. I'd never get another opportunity to showcase another Imperian character on this journey. Henceforth, it made sense to throw in a quick temporary Imperian. Interestingly enough, though, Diagon was a character I had not confirmed all the way up until Chapter 7, where I then knew that the samurai Tamako encountered was to become a briefly recurring face. Chapter 6 is technically the debut chapter for Diagon, but at the same time of this chapter's creation, he really was supposed to be nothing more than a common samurai. The fact of the matter is that, as I was writing Chapter 6, I had no future plans for the samurai. He was originally supposed to ride off, never to be seen again. The name Diagon, as one may have guessed, went through a transformation. In the beginning, I was going for something along the lines of Daigen. The problem here was that I felt the name came off as a bit too foreign to the Japanese style that the Imperians are based upon. As a solution, I aspired to add more O's into the name. As a result, I ended up with Daigoron. I thought that this was closer than the former name, but now seemed a bit too long. Finally, I made the decision to simplify Daigoron, removing Hor from the name to end with Daigon. The appearance is perhaps the most intriguing part, especially to those of whom know me for F-Zero Seppuku. I say this because when designing the unmasked face of Diagon, I took direct inspiration from F-Zero's Roger Buster, albeit there is only one existing depiction of Diagon unmasked at this time, so for all I know this could change in the future. As for Diagon's armored appearance, I dodged an inconsistency here, but I'll get to that in a moment. His armor was based upon the concept drawing I did more than a year ago of an Imperian samurai, including the exact color scheme. Of course, the biggest difference is that in the one existing depiction of him in full armor, we see Diagon of a dragon mask, a concept I was originally planning to skip in terms of Imperian Samurai. Because of my desire to keep Diagon's face a secret, it was changed so that Imperian Samurai did, in fact, wear masks. As for the near inconsistency, I ran into a predicament where I established that warriors of the Council of Five wore the colors of their respective island. While this was all fine at first, I came into a predicament of originally establishing Diagon as a native of the island of Hanshu which would conflict with the fact that he's wearing blue rather than red. This also led to a slight change where, originally, the daimyo of Hanshu was the one following Tamako and Daigon around. The quick solution was to change Daigon's place of birth to Shikoku, and for the daimyo of Shikoku to be the one following them rather than Hanshu. This way, I was justified in portraying Daigon in blue. The final part of Daigon's character was his personality, with Tamako being an honorable and polite Empyrean and follower of Puritanism. I tried Daigon out by making him a different kind of Empyrean. Unlike Tamako, Daigon was established as a more belligerent and reluctantly humble person. While Tamako is the kind of person to practice faith and tradition of a calm attitude, Daigon is the type to make sure that faith and tradition is respected efficiently and on time, even going as far as to enforce this by sword if need be. While I cannot confirm this is true, I believe that subconsciously I may have based Daigon's personality after Knuckles the Echidna from Sonic X and the Sonic Adventure series, but for those who have already read all the chapters involving Daigon, you may also raise the suggestion that he is perhaps also comparable to Knuckles from Sonic Boom. 
As a final fun fact, and perhaps the most, uh, the, well, perhaps the one everyone wants to wonder about, there are a few scenes in Angolais to hint at drunk or accidental homosexual moments. One such occasion, a story he told Tamako, was that he woke up drunken in bed with two men. Never had him accidentally trying to court his liege, a man. The point of these homosexual jokes was merely for humor. But in the possible event that Daigon is gay, I would officially make him the first ever gay scientist character. Considering Tamako's journey takes her away from Imperia, and also that I adhere to a strict policy of censorship when it comes to romances, whether Daigon is gay will be, for better or worse, always a mystery. Yeah, so sorry for the admittedly lackluster video. It even ended up a little longer than I wanted. Strange. But, as I previously explained, there's not much to know about Daigon. He's just a minor character in Engelreis, after all. If you are, however, eager for expanded lore on his character, check out Engelreis.com for extended information. At the time I post this, I have not actually gotten around to making a page for Dagon, but keep your eyes out. And up next in a brief history of Will B. Uh, oh, 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 oh. See, uh, that was <laughs> really close to being Abigail. And let's just say there's some interesting history to her. But hey, look, we got Fiona Flower, so oh boy. Probably going to have a lot to say about Mama Flower next time.